am Pinoy Rob. I am Pinoy Rob. For the headlines, weather forecast: Typhoon Pepito Omanyi moves away from the Philippines. Local news: Counterfeit cigarettes destroyed by soaking in water to prevent resale. Blood donation to be expanded by the Roa family in the upcoming Dugong Bumbo. Hundreds of fire victims receive assistance from the CSWD. Four suspects arrested inside drug den. National news. The DOJ is eyeing an international humanitarian law case against Duterte over the war on drugs. International news. China calls for peace in Ukraine following U.S. approval of missile strikes on Russia. Entertainment. When once bomb, forced to cut short Manila concert due to health concerns. Sports. UP's Nimura wins second gold in athletics at the UAAP. International feature. Bangladeshi former ministers charged with massacre involvement. National feature. Lawmakers challenge allegations that Trillianes is being used as Malacanang's attack dog. Trivia. Shortest war ever. The Amlo Zanzibar conflict lasted just 38 minutes. If you find this segment informative, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to stay updated with our latest news and share this broadcast to your friends and family. Your support helps us keep you informed. Help us get our first 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, sharing, and subscribing to our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts our visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find ways to stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being part of our community. Good morning, Philippines. Magandang umaga, Luzon. Huwag may adlaw, Visayas, Mindanao. Today is Monday, November 18, 2024. I am Athalia P. Sanyel. Local news. Counterfeit cigarettes destroyed by soaking in water to prevent resale. A strong message was sent to traders dealing in counterfeit cigarettes following the raid on 12 stalls in Kogon Market earlier this morning. The operation aims to crack down on the proliferation of smuggled and fake cigarettes, which undermine legitimate businesses and harm the country's economy. Kogon Police Station Commander Major Sabino Labitad spearheaded the operation targeting vendors illegally selling these counterfeit products in the busy Kogon market, a major commercial hub in the city. The raid resulted in the confiscation of around 10 boxes of various cigarette brands, including popular ones often counterfeited. To prevent the seized items from re-entering the market, Authorities immediately destroyed them by soaking the boxes in water. Major Labitad emphasized that this method was necessary to ensure that these illegal goods could no longer be sold or circulated, safeguarding both the economy and public health. This operation is a clear warning to anyone involved in the illegal trade of smuggled or fake cigarettes, Labitad said. 
Such activities not only violate the law but also affect government revenues and the livelihood of legitimate businesses. The destruction of the confiscated items drew mixed reactions. Some applauded to move as a step toward protecting the economy and public interest, while others, particularly those directly involved, expressed regret, noting the financial losses incurred. Traders caught selling counterfeit cigarettes claimed they had invested capital in the products. Though authorities reminded them that participating in illegal trade carries inherent risks. Authorities also reminded the public that counterfeit cigarettes not only harm the economy by evading taxes but also pose serious health risks, as their production often bypasses quality and safe safety standards. The police vowed to continue monitoring markets and conducting raids to curb the spread of illegal products, urging citizens to report any suspicious activities. Blood donation to be expanded by the royal family in the upcoming Dugong Bombo. Blood donation to be expanded by the royal family in the upcoming Dugong Bombo. The royal family plans to expand their blood donation drive in future contributions to the Dugong Bombo project by Bombo Radio Philippines across the country. This commitment was shared by Clifford Jose Roa and his family who have already participated in the initiative alongside his partner, Tai Jean Paala Roa in their child, Kim Bernard Kobe Paalam Roa. The family has donated blood at a total of 77 times since 2007. In an interview with Bombo Radio, Roa stated that as, as long as the opportunity allows and they remain qualified, they will continue to support the Dugong Bombo blood donation drive. He mentioned that starting in 2025, the family will donate together, including their minor daughter at the time. Roa also expressed how important it is for families and communities to participate in this life-saving initiative especially with the ongoing need for blood in the country. He emphasized the impact of collective contributions and how the act of blood donation can help save countless lives, particularly during emergencies or crises. We see this not just as an act of giving, but as a legacy that we want to pass on to the next generation. We hope that more families will follow our example and continue to make a difference, Roa shared. The 2024 Dugong Bombo, a little paid a life to gain project, held in northern Mindanao at the USTP gym, successfully recorded 625 blood donors throughout the Saturday event. This initiative highlights ongoing efforts to raise awareness and encourage blood donations in local communities. It is part of a larger campaign by Bombo Radio Philippines to address the blood supply shortage in various regions, ensuring the hospitals and medical facilities have the necessary resources to treat patients in need. Hundreds of fire victims receive assistance from the CSWD. Initial assistance extended to fire victims in Barangay La Pasan, the City Hall leadership has extended immediate assistance to families Affected by a major fire in Zone 3, Sitio San Lazaro, Barangay La Pasan, in Cagayan de Oro City, yesterday. This came after the efforts of City Mayor Rolando Clarex Uy, along with City Social Welfare Department Head Annie Tongson, who coordinated relief efforts for 206 families or 813 residents displayed by the fire. The affected individuals are now staying at the covered courts of Barangay. The assistance provided to the displaced families included rice, kitchen utensils, canned goods, sleepers, towels, and sleeping linens. According to the Bureau of Fire Protection, 150 houses were destroyed by the fire, which reportedly started in the household of Cerilio Sumalpo. Fortunately, only one minor was injured, though not severely. The estimated structural damage from the fire is around 1.5 million pesos. Mayor Oi reassured that the affected families and the city government would continue to provide support for
for their recovery. The CSWD is also working with the other local organizations to ensure the temporary shelter, clothing, and other essential needs are met for the displaced family. In addition, the Bureau of Fire Protection is investing the cause of the fire and plans to conduct fire safety awareness campaigns in the community to prevent future incidents. Four suspects arrested inside drug den. Four suspected drug pushers have been formally charged by the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency Region 10 following the arrest in Barangay in Palambong, Malaybalay City, Bukidnon. The operation is part of PDA's ongoing efforts to combat the illegal drug trade in the region. PDA 10 Regional Director Attorney Benjamin Gaspi disclosed that the suspects, identified by their al aliases Kim, Jan, Ayan, and Shosh, were apprehended during a raid at a drug den in the area. The suspects, all residents of Malaybalay City, were allegedly engaged in the distribution and sale of illegal substances. Authorities successfully confiscated 5 grams of illegal drugs with an estimated street value of 34,000 pesos. Gaspi emphasized that the agency's action is part of their continued commitment to reducing drug-related activities in the region and upholding the law. The suspects are currently being held in a mini-cell at the Pideya office in Malabalai City where they await court proceedings. The agency has confirmed that the suspects will be formally charged under the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002, which prescribes severe penalties for illegal drug trafficking and distribution. PDF officials noted that further investigations are ongoing of the to determine the full extent of the suspects' operations and connections to larger drug syndicates in the region. The agency has also called on the public to continue cooperating with authorities by providing information on legal drug activities to help strengthen the fight against drugs in the community. Weather forecast Typhoon Pepito Omanyi moves away from the Philippines. Typhoon Bapito, internationally known as MAN, has exceeded the Philippines after wreaking havoc in several regions. Originally a Category 5 Super Typhoon, it made landfall in Catanduanes before moving northwest, where it weakened significantly due to a dry air intrusion, friction from mountainous terrain, and the influence of the northeast monsoon. Despite the severe damage to infrastructure, no fatalities have been reported, underscoring the effectiveness of early warnings and community preparedness. Pagasa's timely advisories and accurate landfall predictions gave communities ample time to prepare, highlighting the importance of awareness and education in disaster management. Hard-hit areas like Katanduanes face a prolonged recovery, with reports of significant damage. However, the minimized loss of life stands as a testament to coordinate efforts by local agencies and residents. As the storm moves towards Hong Kong and southern China, its strength continues to diminish due to strong wind, shear, and a cold surge from the north. Rain bands are still affecting parts of Taiwan, southern Japan, and eastern China, but heavy rainfall has largely stayed offshore. This marks a shift in weather patterns, with the monsoon reducing the likelihood of further typhoon formation in the western Pacific for the coming weeks. This is a much-needed break for regions like Luzon, which has endured four typhoons in November alone. National News. The DOJ is eyeing an international humanitarian law case 
against Duterte over the war on drugs. The Department of Justice Task Force, which was established to probe the war on drugs under the Duterte administration, is considering filing charges against former President Rodrigo Duterte for violations of Republic Act No. 9851, also known as the International Humanitarian Law. This law prohibits war crimes, including extrajudicial killings, and seeks to ex ensure accountability for such actions. Justice Secretary Jesus Crispin Ramula confirmed on Monday that the task force is actively investigating Duterte's role in the war on drugs, particularly focusing on the widespread extrajudicial killings that occurred during his presidency. Ramulia emphasized that the investigation aims to hold responsible individuals accountable for the violations of human rights and the rule of law. The task force was formed to look into the extrajudicial killings that spiked during the Duterte's anti-drug campaign, which was widely criticized by local and international human rights groups. The focus on Duterte comes amid growing calls for accountability for the deaths of thousands of individuals allegedly linked to the drug trade. As the investigation continues, the DOJ is expected to examine evidence related to Duterte's direct involvement or incitement of the violent crackdown, which may potentially lead to a formal case under the international humanitarian law. International news. China calls for peace in Ukraine following U.S. approval of missile strikes on Russia. China reiterated its call for a peaceful resolution to the war in Ukraine on Monday, following the approval by the United States for KYIV to use long-range American missiles against Russian military targets. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Lin Jian emphasized the importance of an early ceasefire any political solution, stating that such an approach would benefit all parties involved. Lee's comments came in response to questions about the U.S. decision to provide Ukraine with advanced missile systems to target Russian positions, a move that has raised tensions and prompted concerns over the potential for further escalation. China has consistently advocated for dialogue and diplomacy in resolving the conflict, urging both Ukraine and Russia to engage in, ne in negotiations for peace. While China has refrained from directly condemning Russia's actions, it has called for restraint and a reduction of in hostilities to avoid further civilian suffering and destabilization in the region. The U.S. approval of long-range missiles of, for Ukraine signals a shift in Western support as it escalates the provision of advanced military aid to bolster Ukraine's defense capabilities. However, this move has prompted mixed reactions globally, with China expressing concerns over its impact on regional security. <laughs> Entertainment. 21's bomb forced to cut short Manila concern due to health concerns. YG Entertainment further apologized to fans, emphasizing that Park Bomb's absence was a result of health issues beyond her control. The agency stated that they had taken all necessary precautions and were closely monitoring her condition, but ultimately, her well being had to take precedence over her performance. The concert in Manila, which was part of 21's highly anticipated comeback tour, continued with the remaining members CL, Dara, and Minzi, giving their best on stage. Much to the crowd's delight. Fans showed unwavering support cheering for the group while also expressing their concern for Park Bomb's health. Park Bomb, known for her powerful vocals and contributions, to the group's success, 
had been looking forward to performing for her Filipino fans. Her sudden health issue, however, prevented her from doing so. The agency reassured fans that 21 would do their best to make up the four missing performance in the future, and that part one would recover and return to performing as soon as possible. The concert's organizers and 21's team asked for an understanding from the fans, who had traveled long distances to see the group perform. Fans flooded social media with messages of support, expressing hope for Park Bomb's quick recovery and a swift return to the stage. Sports UP's Ninura wins second gold in athletics at the UAAP. May again Ninura of the University of the Philippines made history by becoming the first double gold medalist in the UAAP Season 87 Athletics Championships. She achieved this feat after winning the women's 5,000 meter race during the morning session on Monday at the new Clark City Stadium in Kappa Starlak. Minyura had previously secured her first goal in the 10,000 meters event earlier in the competition. Her remarkable performance in both long distance races has solidified her as one of the standout athletes in the event. The victory in the 5,000 meter race was a testament to her endurance and determination as she outpaced her competitors with a strong finish. The University of the Philippines celebrates her success as she continues to add to the school's medal tally in the year's UAAP Athletics Meet. Fans and fellow athletes have praised Ninura's dedication and hard work leading up to those triumphs. Her coach also expressed immense pride in her achievement, noting the extensive training and discipline she had undergone in preparation for the competition. Ninura's performance was especially impressive as it came after a series of grueling races showing her consistency and resilience. International Feature Bangladeshi former ministers charged with massacre involvement. Thirteen former high-ranking officials from Bangladesh arrested following the revolution in August appeared in court on Monday facing charges on of enabling massacres. The charges are related to their involvement in a violent crackdown on student-led protests, which led to over 700 deaths and ultimately the ousting of, of former leader Sheikh Hasina. Among those accused are 11 former ministers, a judge, and a former government secretary. Prosecutors claim that they were responsible for commanding the deadly crackdown and inciting violence by ordering law enforcement to shoot protesters on site and hindering efforts to prevent mass killings. Hasina, who fled to India on August 5, was also scheduled to appear in court on Monday facing charges of massacres, killings, and crimes against humanity. However, the remains in exile. The charges brought against the 13 are focused on August crackdown, but prosecutors plan to extend the investigation into broader human rights violation during Hasina's 15-year tenure, including mass detentions and extrajudicial killings, on political opponents. National Feature Lawmakers challenge allegations that Trillianes is being used as Malacanian's attack dog. At least two congressmen have, have come to the defense of former Senator Antonio Trillianes the Port rejecting accusations that he is being used as an attack dog by Malacanang. This follows Trillianes' recent claims during a November 13 House Quad Committee hearing, 
where he revived allegations that the Duterte family had benefited from drug money. House Deputy Majority Leader Representative Francisco Paulo Ortega V emphasized that Trillanes has been consistent in raising concerns about former President Duterte's family, which he has done since 2016. According to Ortega, Trillanes' actions are not new, but part of his long-standing stance on the issue, especially after the Duterte administration failed to provide answers in the past. House Assistant Majority Leader Representative Jefferson Konkun echoed Ortega's sentiment, explaining that Trillanes' accusations go as far back as 2016 before Duterte became president. He added that the former senator has simply continued to raise the same issues that were left un unaddressed by the past administration. Kong Hoon further emphasized that the allegations against the Duterte family need to be answered, especially since the issues raised by Trillanes remain unresolved. He argued that the continued inquiry into these matters is valid and necessary for accountability. These statements come as Trillanes remains a, a demand about the corruption allegations against the Duterte family, which have been a subject of his public discourse for years. Sivia Shortest war ever. The Anglo Zanzibar conflict lasted just 38 minutes. The Anglo Zanzibar War, August 27, 1896, is the shortest recorded war in history, lasting between 38 and 45 minutes. It took place between the British Empire and the island's Sultanate of Zanzibar, which was under British influence in East Africa. The conflict was triggered by the death of Sultan Hamad bin Mohammed. His successor, Prince Khalid ibn Bargash, seized the palace and declared himself the new Sultan, despite the British preference for Sultan Hamad's cousin, Sultan Ali bin Hamad, who was more sympathetic to British interests. When Khalid refused to step down, the British issued an ultimatum demanding his surrender, which he ignored. At 9 a.m. on August 27, the British responded by bombarding Khalid's position with naval art artillery from cruisers and gunboats. The British forces with superior firepower quickly destroyed the palace and other key structures held by Khalid. Despite some resistance, Khalid's forces were overwhelmed in under 40 minutes. The Sultan, having taken refuge in the palace minarets, eventually escaped to the German consulate and was granted asylum, later being insulted to German East Africa. The British installed their preferred Sultan, Hamad bin Mohammed, and consolidated their control over Zanzibar marking the end of its independence and its further integration into the British Empire. The war resulted in very few British casualties, with only one British sailor injured, while Khalid's defenders su suffered significant losses, with estimates of between 50 and 100 killed. This brief but decisive conflict highlighted the power imbalance between colonial powers and local rulers in Africa and underscored Britain's determination to maintain the dominance over its protectorates. And that was the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. Please subscribe, follow, like, and share Pernoy Rob on YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook, and please share this video. And have a wonderful day. If you find this segment informative, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to stay updated with our latest news and share this broadcast to your friends and family. Your support helps us keep you informed. Help us get our first 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, sharing, 
and subscribing to our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts our visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find ways to stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being part of our community.